So we're back at the wet spot and today we're gonna look at a ton of species of loaches who we both feel should be a lot more popular in the hobby. What is it that you like about loaches? Well, as a catfish specialist and fanatic, I will admit that sometimes I don't have as many loaches as I should. Same trophic niches a lot of the time, sorry loaches, but I think that a lot of the time loaches can fill a niche that people really like for color, for activity, for being interesting, or just a lot of the time as kind of an oddball, not like a myriad or like a butterfly fish or something, but if you just want something weird, why not get like a zodiac loach or something, or a couple of them, or a horse face? They're mostly inoffensive. A lot of them are gonna be fun to keep, going to be very long lived, very hardy, so long as you keep your water quality up. A lot of them have smaller scales. And to be blunt, a lot of them are very inexpensive. A group of several of some of these loaches is gonna run you like 25, 30 bucks to get a nice group. And a lot of the time you can keep them together like you would certain cichlid communities or barbs where it's like, oh, I like this loach and this loach. Oh, what do you know? I can keep them <laughs> all together. Like I do at home in my loach and barb tank. Works great, very underappreciated fish, and I think a lot of people just get turned off by, it's brown and it's at the bottom. Well, that's not a very good reason, I think. All right, what are we looking at here? Okay, so this fish is great. This is Serpenticobitus octazona, the serpent loach, or I've seen it called the eight-banded loach, but why would you call it that when you can call it a serpent? Uh, also a neocella that snuck in here. Uh, so this fish is awesome. They're gonna come from faster flowing environs typically and I believe Laos, Thailand and Vietnam just like a ton of loaches that we're gonna cover. Uh, some of these are actually different species. Uh, now that I've stared at them, now that I've studied loaches quite a bit more since it was a weak point for me for a long time, uh, you'll see differences on the banding a bit. And those are gonna be, if memory serves, Serpenticobitus cingulata. There's another one, uh, Zonata, that I believe is further up the Mekong drainage, if I'm remembering rightly, that I've never seen in the flesh. I would say the hardest part about keeping these, other than just keeping them nice and clean, although they're pretty hardy, uh, is giving them enough food. This is not a sprinkle flake in and you're good fish unless you don't have much in your tank. Uh, they tend to like a lot more frozen food, but really what that is, and they'll go for tablets as well, by the way, uh, whatever it is, they seem to slurp it up greedily and they're just really interesting. They'll either hover like those guys in the back or they'll bop around like these guys up front. Uh, really, really personable loach. Don't really seem to have a mean bone in their body. It has been too long since I've kept these and I should probably try to snake through and get uh, both species. Grow them out, see how different they look uh, when they're bigger. All right, here's one people right, might recognize. Aha, the fruit stripe gum loach, also known as Botia striata. Uh, zebra loaches are great. These come a lot furtherly south than a lot of other loaches, if I'm remembering rightly, which is why they're a lot more seasonal than some of the stuff from India, like yo-yo uh, loaches, or even to an extent queen loaches, uh, that you'll see a lot more commonly. They don't get very big. This is a great snail eater. That's actually how I first kept them, was I got a group for a bunch of Malayan trumpet snails in a 120. Uh, love to have groups are just a little bit feisty without being obnoxious occasionally, maybe a nip tail fin, a little bit of squabbling, but very, very attractive fish. The colors really intensify as they age and the banding a lot of the time I've seen even get a lot thinner. Uh, there seems to be a lot of variation and since people don't typically get a catch location uh, with any of these Indian loaches, this is a really neat guy to see and it's, you never know what they truly might turn into, but very nice little loach, only get max maybe a chunky three and a half, four inches. They're very popular for a reason, and the seasonality aspect, of course, makes them even more like, get them while they're here. But great loach, really like these guys. All right, what are we looking at here? Ooh, this fish is great. Uh, the Cruciatus loach, biggest one I've ever seen, was probably a little bit over an inch and a half. Uh, sometimes they're called the hovering loach, a lot of fish are. Uh, these guys are awesome because they're extremely peaceful, wonderful nano fish, uh, very inquisitive. These guys swam through the air tube uh, back here behind our filtration, because uh, otherwise there's only seven guys in this tank. Uh, these <laughs> come from Vietnam, uh, so I've always really enjoyed, I've made the deliberation several times over the years to keep them alongside Vietnam white clouds because they really play off each other. It's like peanut butter and jelly. These guys are gonna be like lower in the water column to the bottom. They have nice vertical stripes. The Vietnam white clouds have great color, horizontal stripe, and they're gonna be a bit higher. Love plants, very, very easy fish to keep. Uh, so long as food is small, they'll take it. I had these guys on flake and pellet, no problem. Uh, I believe they've been spawned a couple times in the aquarium as well. I think they lay eggs, if I'm remembering rightly, amongst the leaves of aquatic plants, but wonderful nano fish. Uh, I kept them alongside a mono shrimp, no problem. I can't imagine a large adult unless it was starving would pick on like a neo shrimp, 
if I had to guess. Uh, wonderful little fish, kept them alongside like micro rasboras as well. Awesome little guy, and if you don't have a ton of tank space, a little group of these puts out very little waste, takes up very little space. Wonderful, wonderful fish. And they are not snail eaters, or? I wouldn't rely on it. I would be surprised if they'd go for it. They don't have the pointy dentition like a botia loach would have necessarily. Uh, maybe if it was a baby snail, but you're probably uh, not gonna get anything in, out of them in that regard, unfortunately. But it does mean that you can keep them alongside bigger snails if that's your vibe. All right, so here's a cool one that I've kept of the ornate tiger sand loach. Actually, I think I have some of these in the fish room right now. What can you tell us about these? This fish rips, and I like that this guy uh, has, has become a homeowner. Good on you in, in <laughs> the year 2024, man. That's not always easy. Uh, I love this fish to death. I call them the coat change loach because that's a lot funnier than ornate tiger sand loach, although that is very accurate. Uh, because this tank is bare bottom, you're not seeing the full color. Uh, any of this banding is gonna be gold. It's gonna be gold on tan. It's a gorgeous fish. They're a wiggler. They're a lot like the zipper loaches or some of the other ones uh, that we'll talk about. Get about three and a half inches long. A Little bit stouter, a little bit feistier. I have these with some bigger barbs, but they're not so mean that you can't keep them with smaller fare as well. Uh, I've had these with anything from like headstander barbs to now my group is in my 125 with uh, red tinged barbs, some bigger garas. I love these to death. Uh, they seem to be something that's popped up within the last couple of years, and I really hope they're here to stay because they're so gorgeous when they get size. Uh, a lot of these strange loaches that fit in that niche seem to be here for a little bit, and then they're gone. That's disheartening because I love these. Yeah, he's greeting us. That's, that's fantastic, <laughs> but awesome loach. Love them to death. Have some. Always want to get more. All right, so I really love these guys. What can you tell us about these? I really like the tiger loaches. Uh, I have truthfully never kept them long term. I had some when I moved out west, so I had to rehome mine. Uh, these guys can be, to be blunt, really feisty. They get large. Most of these are gonna get, in this genus Syncrosis, are gonna get seven to 10 inches long, sometimes even bigger, and they can be feisty. Uh, I have seen these bite the tails of Malawis. It's not to say that they can't be kept with other fish and you would wanna keep a group, so you want space. 75 seems bare minimum for a group of these preferably a six foot tank, but what they do lack in the ease of housing them, I think is more than made up for the color and the personality. Full grown member of any, any member of this genus as they grow is stunning. They have a ton of personality. They're very active, a lot of fun to watch. Uh, these should be Hymenophysa, unless I botched that one, they came in as helodes, which they are definitely not. Uh, this is a great fish. It's just definitely one that's a little bit out there for most folks that aren't dedicated loach enthusiasts, but they're still a standby for a reason. They're great fish. They're pretty now. They're only going to look better. Yeah, I've really found myself watching this tank a lot just because they do have really good behavior. Really fun. This they're... fish is incredible. Uh, this is also very unusual. This is, I believe, a first for us. These are tank raised. Uh, I'm oh, wow. going to go out on a limb, say that it's most likely that this is a case of hormones. Fortunately, unlike a lot of other hormone bred fish, I don't, I, these are the right fish. I don't think these are hybrids at all. Kansas are great. I don't know that they're amazing snail eaters. I never have enough snails in my tanks to really observe, and it's been a minute since I've had Kansas. These are the least wiggly of the genus. They'll get about five inches long, and they're stout is the best way to say it. They're not mean. I've kept them alongside smaller barbs and stuff like that, but would they maybe pick on or beat up on some neon tetras if they were having a day? Probably. Uh, gorgeous golden color that comes through. The striping changes a little bit as they age. It's an awesome fish. Every fish in the genus Cinnabodia I think is incredible. They're beautiful. They have a ton of activity, and if they're not right in your face at feeding time, it's just slither through whatever crevice. I dumped a five gallon bucket, literally, of just cobbles into my 125 for my Cinnabodia and just watching all my loaches plow through those and wiggle <laughs> through it at feeding time is one of my favorite parts of feeding my entire fish room. I love watching these guys. All right, the old horse face loach. Give us some info on these guys. I think this fish might actually be immortal. Uh, <laughs> I can't prove that. I have had so many tanks of horse face loaches over the years where I swear like something weird happened and yet there's still horse face loaches in the sand. Uh, this is one that I think isn't gonna be for everybody. Uh, some folks don't like how wiggly and worm-like they are. Uh, they do get a little bit larger. Typically about six to eight inches is not unheard of. Oh, Four wow. horse face loaches, these are Dialuzona. You'll see them a lot of the time labeled as Quirorhynchus. Uh, all of them look about the same in this genus. 
Horse face loaches are sweethearts. I've never had a problem with them. I think they're very charismatic. Admittedly, sometimes, yeah, you'll see eyes poking out of the sand, but I think that's just part of the charm, personally. Great fish, and again, they're indestructible. There's a lot worse you could do for weird fish in your tank than maybe a few horse face loaches, just because they're, they're just goofy looking. Look at them. Great little fish, but they lack in color. They make up in everything else. All right, what do we got here? We have Botia Kubatai and friends, which look like two Pentazona barbs and maybe a Pavi type Rasbora. Uh, Kubatai is one of the most popular loaches for a reason. This is what I would call, quote, the intermediate stage. As they grow, as they age, a lot of that banding, a lot of that speckling, which can be almost like a baby blue with white on it, uh, intensifies, goes all over the body. It's a gorgeous loach. Many people would consider it the most attractive botia. Uh, I'd be hard pressed to necessarily disagree with that. Very peaceful, don't seem to have a mean bone in their body. I don't know that they love higher temperatures necessarily, but I've seen these a lot of the time as uh, discus tank inhabitants where they are snail leaders that are mm. attractive and peaceful. Uh, vice versa, I saw a very pretty tank when I was in Richmond speaking uh, recently where these were alongside a bunch of reasonably tempered Victorian cichlids and West African cichlids. It was a very pretty tank, ton of activity, ton of color, and then these little guys were down at the bottom, uh, chugging along, not having a problem with anybody. Really great loach, really pretty. These are, again, are a little bit newer, and there's a chain loach in here, it looks like it snuck through. Uh, these, not quite as fat as I want, but again, they're pretty new to us, so we just need a little bit more time to fatten these guys up. But wonderful loach. I would say one of the best ones, so to speak, in the genus for a lot of reasons. Yeah, they're very pretty. All right, so this one's new to me. I've never seen these. What do we got here? Uh, we have Schistra bevisi, I mean bevini, the ring loach. Uh, I have not kept these yet, I'll admit it. Uh, Schistra is a massive nightmare genus. I keep seeing the meme on Facebook that the genie has like, there's rules for your wishes and one of them is, can I identify this Shistera loach? And then the genie says, no, there's four wishes. <laughs> uh, these appear to be the right fish. They also appear to be mostly grown to me. I can't imagine that they'll get much larger than this. Uh, I believe these guys are coming from Thailand or Vietnam, but also seem to be very even tempered. Some of the Shistera we get in uh, can be pretty mean to each other, can grow much larger, but these seem to be very peaceful. Uh, one of the gals here, I believe, has a group of these at home that she treasures. They're alongside a lot of other smaller, peaceful loaches. Uh, and a lot of the behavior that I've seen thus far is mostly this. They sit there and stare at you with those big squirrel eyes and look cute. And that female back there is most assuredly gravid. Granted, some of these guys are fat because they've uh, had some time to fatten up. But yeah, she's already swelled full of eggs. So maybe if somebody uh, snags her, they might have some luck breeding these. All right, so everyone should recognize these spazzy guys. Uh, um, tell us about these. Uh, we are lucky enough to get these in large numbers because they never stop doing this. This is all day for this fish. It is incredible. You have them either sit there and do nothing or wiggle. It's awesome. I like to just kind of reach into the pile sometimes. I'll have bloodworms in my hands and let them just worm. Uh, the reason why I like oblonga is they do seem to be a lot more bold than the other coolie loach types. They don't get terribly large. Uh, they're gonna be about the same size as your standard, so to speak, coolie loach. Uh, I know a lot of folks are always like, oh, why would I want the ugly one? Because they come out, they're bold. They've got a ton of personality, very cute face, and it looks like they have a little, it's probably a Dorier maybe, or an Anguilaris, I don't remember. Probably Dorier back there poking there. This wiggly face, little contaminant that came in, or. Nope, that's Angularis. We had them in this tank before. But yeah, great loach and what they lack in color. I think they're better, so to speak, as aquarium inhabitants compared to your other coolies. Main difference, I would say, is they're just a scooch less happy with not great water. So just keep up on those water changes like you should be doing anyway, and you'll be just fine. You don't need any special power heads or extra flow or anything. Just a really nice little peaceful community mm -hmm. fish. So here's one of my all-time favorite loaches, the Zodiac loach. Um, Tell us about these. This is the Zodiac loach speaking. <laughs> uh, I love this fish. This is what uh, my wife has affectionately referred to as a booper, uh, much like the zipper loach, much like some of the other ones. Uh, they're very pretty. This fellow right here, the big boy, has incredible golden color, which is really, really nice. Uh, these are only gonna get about three inches long, maybe a tad bigger on a nice old specimen. So these are great size. These came in impeccable. This is a gorgeous batch. Uh, they're probably not going to do anything for a snail problem, but these do great in a hill stream setup alongside Suelia, 
or other uh, hill stream loaches? Can they be kept in a nice clean community as well? Yes, they're pretty, they're active, they're peaceful, they're not terribly expensive. What, what else could you ask for? What, what else do you want this fish to do in terms of being a great aquarium inhabitant? I don't know. There's certainly a lot of really nice fat females in here too that are probably gravid. Maybe it's that time of the year for them because these are another newer one for us, but beautiful loach, awesome loach. I, everything in this genus I think is incredible and these are just chef's kiss loach. Just awesome, awesome fish. Yeah, sometimes you can really, even on camera, see that gold in their fins. It's really nice. All right, what do we got here? This is the polka dot loach. A lot more people probably familiar with these. Uh, this is one I remember seeing a lot growing up as a kid. These are, I would say, realistically about full grown. Maybe pack on a little bit more there. You can see how stout a lot of these are. Uh, these are unfortunately one of the older inhabitants here in the fish room for whatever reason. Seems like a lot of folks, 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 there we go. Just don't always take a chance on some of these smaller loaches, which is really a shame because they're so much fun. They're so personable. Uh, these do seem to be a little bit feistier to each other than you might suspect given their small size. Do they kill? Not typically. Do they nip at fins on each other a lot more than you'd probably expect or sometimes want? Admittedly, so at least probably a 20 gallon tank for a group of three to four of these. But I've kept them alongside like Harlequin, Rasboras, Black Neon, Tetras. Great little community loach. Get three, get four, get six, shove them in a tank and enjoy because I look at them. Great little patterns great activity and all of this is going to darken of course because our sand is fairly light it does mean that some of those patterns aren't going to be quite as contrasting as you'd see but awesome loach really like these guys and one of the more uh, kind of old time standards it feels like all right here's a new one for me what do we got here <laughs> it's the railroad loach because they've got stripes like that <laughs> uh, i believe these came in as schistera sp vietnam and as i mentioned i'm not going to speciate that i you couldn't make me do it at gunpoint uh, could i sit there and count fen rays yes do i know which location in vietnam they would have come from no so we're just going to call them the railroad loach for now they seem to be pretty peaceful uh we haven't had any problems with them seem to be quite hardy <laughs> Uh, in terms of behavior and what I'd expect, they do remind me a lot of like the half-banded loaches. So my suspicion is they're probably going to get about two and a half, three inches long. Not be terribly problematic to keep, but this is unfortunately one of those mysteries that we may not be able to crack. Uh, I do really like watching these guys selfishly because I chose the name. Uh, but I really do like seeing them and like that guy back there pecking. They're one of the starers. They're not going to be bopping around like some of these other guys, but they are going to be sitting right there being charming in their own right. Also, who doesn't love a good choo-choo loach? I certainly do. All right, so now we have the dwarf horse face. We saw the uh, larger ones earlier. Tell us about these. This fish slaps. Uh, one way to tell the genus, Acanthopsoides, in case you ever get a small batch of loaches at your local fish store, uh, is the little spot on the caudal peduncle. Good way to tell them apart, although speciating them is a little tricky. Uh, these are full grown, that's it. They do wow. seem to come out a lot more than your average horse face loach, as far as I can tell. Uh, when we have had them in deeper sand tanks, we haven't really observed them burrowing. They're just as easy to keep, just as hardy as your standard horse face loach. Patterning, you could argue, is a little bit more attractive because you see kind of the glowy pink parts of their body. Uh, but this would be an awesome nano fish. I mean, they get that big. They're not going to hurt anything. They're not going to eat anything. What are they going to do other than look really cool and be a lot of fun to look at and watch? Uh, I love when we get these in. These really should be a lot more popular than they are, probably because they're a little obscure, to be honest with you. But I mean, look at it. It's a tiny little horse face loach. That's great. That's as big as they get. That's it. You are seeing the fish in the flesh at almost its best when it would be in a more fully furnished tank as opposed to where it's at now. Great fish. What do we got here? Paracantha cobitis botia, the loach loach. Incredible. Uh, not in the genus Botia though. So the zipper loach is a great fish. You can see some of the yellow, some of the orangish color already on the fins of some of these guys that I think is very attractive. I presume that's a male trait. Uh, these are the original booper at home. These guys will swim in the water column and just boop around. Are they gonna be able to hold their own? Yes. Are these another denizen of my large barb and loach 125? Also yes. So great alongside stuff like uh, the ornate tiger sand loach. Again, just a little bit feistier than some folks may bargain for. They will fight and squabble amongst themselves a bit, so make sure to have a group that have room, but still peaceful enough amongst other fish that, again, something like a 
Black Phantom Tetra, Black Neon Tetra, Harlequin Rasbora, community fish that isn't too big but has some oomph to it, some body, and they're gonna be totally fine against. Very hardy, very adaptable. Uh, can you keep them in a hill stream style setup? Yes, have I done it? Yes, can you keep them in a standard community? Also, yes. Uh, awesome fish, get about four inches long at most. And again, just one that you can actually find a lot of the time, one that tends to be very hardy, reasonably inexpensive, I'd say. These tend to retail for no more than like seven, eight bucks. And it's a great fish. Very charismatic, very personable. Uh, one of my favorites to feed, because I'll swim up into a cloud of bloodworms and just pluck individual bits right there in front of you. It's a ton of fun. Well, these guys are not happy. We just stole all their <laughs> decorations, but uh, what do we got here? You guys need to be film stars. So this is Yasuhikotakia modesta. The red tail loach, uh, these appear to be the red tail population. My understanding is that there's also a yellow tail. Uh, these guys are awesome loaches. As they age, as they develop uh, their color, you'll have bright red fins, or again, bright yellow if you get that population, on kind of a slaty, like blue-gray body. Very, very pretty loach. Uh, I'm not going to lie, these are kind of mean. Why do I say that? Is it to say, don't buy this fish? No, it means you need to keep a group of them. You need to have an appropriate uh, set up for them, whether it's alongside bigger, sturdier fish, or alternatively, a lot of these meaner loaches, like these will end up seven inches ish, give or take. There's some records of larger, but six, seven inches seems to be about where they stop. Have I seen people keep them alongside something like Kubatai that's larger and sturdy but doesn't have a mean bone in its body, seemingly? Yeah, I mean, these zebra loaches are fine with them. Those guys stay a lot smaller and they're a lot less aggressive. Are they fine? Yeah, they like loach company. Uh, folks like Mark Duffel, Jim Powers, other tanks I've seen. Uh, especially on like Facebook groups or loaches.com where it's just a big group and you're able to have different aggression levels and size levels so long as you stock it properly is where these guys I think would really shine. Again, it's that, that lochi cloud where you just know what the fish might do, give them appropriate space, appropriate hides, and that means that you don't have to have like a, a big mean cichlid or something where these guys might not be happy anyway or like silver dollars, there are places these guys can work and shine and look really well, like a barb community. It's like the same thing, but different. You can stock all sorts of different stuff together of varying aggression levels within reason, so long as you're mindful, you're watching, you're feeding your fish and you're keeping them clean. But great loach, beautiful loach. Uh, these have been selling very well for us, which is great. I love this fish and it means that that's probably a good time for us to get more. All right, next up, what do we got? This fish is incredible. Uh, Barbuca diabolica. The scooter loach, or as I've seen them called, the diabolic red-eyed loach, or infernal loach, or devil loach. I've seen all sorts of fun names, uh, which we have opted not to go for, although it's fun for the reason that these are extraordinarily peaceful. Uh, I love this fish. The reason they're called that, and why they have the species epithet diabolica, is if you get that glint just right, uh, you'll see reflective red in their eye. I think, what is it, tapetum lucidum? I'm probably just pulling that out of my keister, but anyway, these don't get a ton larger than this, extremely peaceful. Uh, do need some cleaner water. Definitely gonna be more of a faster flowing area of fish and one that I've struggled truthfully to get onto dried food. So this is one where feedings of Daphnia or baby brine or something else small, whether it's frozen or not, tend to be the key to success. But I do love these guys. These would be awesome alongside like some micro rasboras. And so long as you have enough oxygenation, could you keep them alongside other nano fish that might not necessarily come from faster flowing areas? I've seen it done. I don't see why not, but I do just love these guys. They're one of the smallest loaches that you'll see. They've got a cool name. They've got a cool look to them. Funny little eye glint. And just an awesome, awesome fish. This batch has been excellent for us. Great weight, great health. I just can't say enough about how cool I think these guys are. Now here's a beautiful loach. What do we got here? The yo-yo loach. Uh, so the yo-yos are one of the loaches that I would say most folks are probably most familiar with alongside a coolie loach. Uh, this fish is, I would say misunderstood is going to be a really good descriptor for it. Uh, there's two species sometimes traded as the yo-yo loach, Almore and Loachata. They do come from different areas. There's some differences to the pattern, especially as they're older. Still a pain in the butt to tell apart. And of course, there's, I think, a typically a few contaminants. But anywho, these guys will have their pattern change dramatically as they age, get some nice reticulated patterns, get almost kind of like this brownish blue uh, to them eventually as they grow about six inches long, I would say, is the max size, although I've certainly seen some physically larger that are older and very well cared for. Uh, these guys, 
I think are probably most often sold as a snail eater for a lot of folks, but they don't always get enough of them in a group. That's when they start plucking eyes, and I have totally been the pet store employee on the receiving end of one huge yo-yo loach that, quote, was being really mean to stuff, or I got rid of all my snails. And that's a shame, because it's a really nice fish. Very attractive, great patterning. Not really that aggressive, but just misunderstood. Biggest thing is keep a group, keep them alongside other loaches, care for them well, and enjoy them for theoretically decades. This can be, like a lot of these other loaches, a very long-lived fish and very, very fun in their own right, even when they're not doing a job, so to speak. All right, there you have it. Thank you, Cameron, for showing us all You're these loaches. As always, check out the wet spot or wetspottropicalfish.com, not the wet spot, and uh, use code uh, Steamfoot, uh, and use code Steamfoot, and use code Steamfoot10 for 10% off your order. Go get some loaches, folks. You won't regret it. Are you guys again? <laughs>